Good evening. My name is Randy Fernandez and welcome to City Beat. City Beat is a show designed to inform and educate the residents of the city of Port Huron about the programs and activities that affect their everyday lives. Our topic today is the Port Huron Flags and my guests are the president of the Port Huron Flags, Dan Eisenberg, and the coach of the Flags, Mr. Paul Willett. Dan, Paul, welcome to City Beat. Thanks, Thanks. Randy. Well, you know, a couple of months ago, we had uh, the general manager, Herb Hammond, uh, uh, up here. And we also had the uh, chairman of the board, uh, Charlie Barrett, uh, also here. And it kind of kind of flows. That was about, again, three, four months ago. We're uh, only a month or so away from, from, from the season. So I'm glad you guys could, could join us and kind of an, inform us here as the, as the season gets ready, uh, what's been done the last uh, uh, three months. So I'm going to start with you, Dan. You know, uh, I went to your press conference when they introduced you at the, at the fog cutter there, and, uh, you know, 18 years with the Detroit Pistons. Had a hard sales, time with the microphone. You know, yeah. with sales, that's right. Uh, the microphone wouldn't, well, you're a tall man, and wouldn't quite, <laughs> wouldn't quite reach you, but uh, 18 years with the Pistons. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if the uh, camera crew can get a shot. You've got the Piston uh, right. uh, championship ring there. Uh, but a lot of time spent there, a lot of successful time spent there, all of a sudden to leave, you know, an NBA franchise uh, to come to my beloved Port Huron, hometown of Port Huron, Michigan. Uh, explain your reasons why. Well, first of all, I want to make it perfectly clear that I'm not crazy, okay? Because <laughs> that's uh, everybody asked me that question. But um, I, my, the years that I had with the Pistons, it, it was the greatest job in the world. You got to be uh, around the glitz and glamour of the NBA but also the Palace of Auburn Hills was the number one marketed arena in, in the whole country. And uh, my job there and as director of season sales, we got to wear many hats. You know, we got to be involved in all the new projects such as starting a whole new minor league team once in a while. We started a soccer team. We had the Detroit Vipers in the International Hockey League. Uh, the women's basketball team is still there, uh, the uh, Detroit Shock. So everything that we did, it, it was exciting. We got to be part of something that you brought fans to an arena to make sure that they had a great time and, and you loved what you were doing. But last year, in 2004, um, all of a sudden the Pistons, wow, you know, they win the world championship and uh, I, I get another championship ring and uh, then my Rochester Church of Christ Red Sox even won the softball championship finally over the Yankees and then the real Boston Red Sox finally beat the Yankees and I was just kind of like, Everybody on my team, everybody just keeps winning. And I was just kind of saying, you know what? I am ready for a new challenge. I'm ready for a new change because the Pistons had just done so well. We had sold out every game. And I was kind of like, you know what? I am looking for a whole new challenge. So that's what, uh, that's what kind of inspired me when I was talking to General Sports, Andy Appleby, uh, who Charlie Barrett uh, had hired. And um, uh, when Andy talked to me, I talked to him about maybe branching out of my own, starting my own company. Uh, acting as a liaison between sports and a community. But then uh, before I made that decision, Andy said, well, wait a minute, there's something exciting happening here in Port Huron. Uh, they are looking for somebody with uh, the kind of experience that you have, with leadership skills and creativity uh, that can start a whole staff uh, to bridge the community with that hockey team there. And um, the Port Huron flags were high on getting their tradition back um, from the team that they had here from 62 to 81. And that, that intrigued me when I came up here and um, I interviewed with the five uh, prominent investors of the board. And they did not really have to sell me on Port Huron. I, <laughs> I kind of fell in love with the place just from the people in the community, just from walking around. And everybody uh, downtown just uh, was very friendly and uh, it, it looked like a great place to be. And I, I just said, you know what? After uh, talking it over with my wife and daughter, I said, you know what? This is, uh, is going to be a new, new adventure. I'm going to go go take on this presidency here with the Port Huron Flags and, and see if we can do it right, right from the beginning to make sure that I have a great quality staff on hand and to make sure that we are putting a great product uh, on the ice for the fans. Uh, when they do come to the games, they walk away saying, you know what, I had a great time and it's all about the community. And that's what intrigued me and wanted me to get on board with the Flags. Well, again, you mentioned investors, but uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a basically a non-profit community hockey team. Is that correct? Well, they did invest their heart and soul, though. <laughs> and uh, right, it, we are non-profit, we're community owned. And uh, that's, it, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, the, the five uh, prominent members of the board, there are over 40 charter members that have, uh, uh, that do want to be a part of this nonprofit community-owned team, 
and uh, the five that I interviewed with, uh, they all are very uh, well-known folks here in the community. Larry Smith of Radio First, uh, uh, Charlie Barrett mentioned him, of course, with Kwood Auto, and uh, Paul Maxwell with uh, Atchison Adventure. So everybody, <coughs> everybody has a, a true desire to see this team work and, and to see it be a success for hopefully the next 20 years. So we start out. We've got uh, you know Charlie Barrett really taking hold of things with uh, Marsh Campbell, you know from Citizens First Bank, get, getting the team back together. When it looked pretty bleak, to be honest with you, that we weren't we weren't going to have a team. Uh, you know, Herb Hammond's volunteering his time as the as the general manager. So you've got Charlie and Herb out there, and against uh, with other uh, volunteers in the community. Their first hire is you, Dan. Okay, so we got everything in place except a coach. Okay, so we had we had mentioned uh, at the previous show, Paul, that uh, you hadn't quite accepted the job yet, but you were the front runner, and we put that out there. So we're glad we didn't have to you know tape over that oh. sound bite, so to speak. But uh, now the audience gets to see uh, Paul Litt, uh, the new coach. I know Paul, uh, Dan just explained the reasons why he came here. You were a player in the American Hockey League, the East Coast Hockey League. Was that just why you were in your playing days, just a natural progression for you that you thought, you know what, when, when my career is done or I get the opportunity, I want to go into coaching. And, and if so, uh, you know, you're on the West Coast there, you know, kind of enjoying things, laid back atmosphere out there. And I think it's... Bakersfield, California, whatever, and, Bakersfield, yeah. and hopefully you didn't have to look on the th on the map of Michigan there and go Port Huron, okay, at the, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, what made you get into coaching? And 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 a follow up with that is Bakersfield, California to, to Port Huron, Michigan. Explain that move. Uh, I, I probably got into coaching probably about eight years ago when I was uh, 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 finished up my career in the IHL in Fort Wayne. Uh, I was kind of sitting at home, didn't really have a contract, didn't. Uh, didn't really know what I was going to do, and I got a call from Muskegon in this league uh, from Paul Kelly, the coach down there, come on, uh, come on down, help out. So, took an, I got an opportunity to go down there and, uh, and play a few games, and I got uh, got involved uh, in the coaching aspect. So, I was kind of like player uh, player assistant coach. So, I spent the year in Muskegon, then uh, the, the the next year I uh, got involved in management. I was player assistant manager. So, I don't know if anybody. Uh, I don't know if Dan knew that, but I was a manager too. Uh, so I got involved in managing and coaching at the same time I was playing. So I uh, spent a year in Mus uh, two years in Muskegon. My second year I won a championship in Muskegon. Uh, decided to go out west and so went to uh, Bakersfield as a player assistant coach again. Uh, opportunity. So uh, I'm not coming in, in this totally blind. I uh, had the opportunity to work uh, at recruiting, uh, the business side, if it was setting up hotels for road trips or uh, getting buses in, I kind of have a background in, in, in all of that. So I think that uh, that definitely helped out uh, uh, when they when they called uh, they called me and they, they offered me the job. That uh, I had that background. So uh, I spent uh, five years as a player in Bakersfield. Had a uh, you know had a, a good career as a player, 14 years. Uh, retired last year. Got a, got into a full time assistant job in Bakersfield. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if I was looking to uh, start my head coaching career uh, as quick as it happened. I uh, had the opportunity to meet Herb Hammond uh, two years ago. Uh, I was at a game here in Port Huron scouting for Bakersfield. Uh, Herb came up to me and introduced himself. We ended up kind of hitting it off for, uh, for a couple days, went, uh, went around scouting, went to Ontario, watched some junior games. Uh, kept in contact with Herb throughout the year uh, about players, so we always had that relationship. Got a call from Herb. Uh, near the end of our season, about possibly coming in and interviewing for the flags job, uh, and uh, yeah, I still remember the call, and I remember how excited I was. Uh, uh, Dan was talking about a challenge. I think I'm uh, I'm that type of person too. I uh, challenged to uh, to be an assistant coach. I, I did that, and uh, at the end of the season, I was kind of asking myself, what's my next challenge? And uh, definitely, a head coach was uh, was in the back of my head, and I just didn't know if I had enough experience or. Uh, if I had the chance, uh, you know, I came in here on a scouting trip again, interviewed with Port Huron, and uh, luckily uh, they liked uh, what they what they heard and uh, gave the opportunity to come in and coach. So uh, I've been pretty fortunate. Uh, I've been here about two months. My family's been here a month, and uh, they just love it. Uh, the people, the community. It's been uh, it's been great. Like I said, uh, uh, when I played in the league, and you come in here in in January, it's just like any other team. It's uh, uh, you know, it's snowing out. You don't really get a uh, get a chance to see the community or get a chance to talk to some people. But uh, uh, I definitely uh, don't regret my decision. Everything's been great. The people's been great, and uh, I'm looking forward to building a pretty good hockey team here. Well, again, we're glad to have both uh, you and Dan uh, as uh, members of our uh, Port Huron community. And, and like you said, you know, it, uh, 
in the summertime, uh, you know, with the with the water and, and and the beauty and the scenery that the, that we have, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's home to many. We keep people leave, but they uh, they always seem to uh, see, seem to come back. Uh, you know, we're going to go back and forth on these questions, but you know, both of you have talked about how how the Pistons, and in your case, Paul, uh, how a player, then assistant coach and, and and manager, and now the head coach, your first head coaching experience. Uh, Dan, again, uh, you, you feel that the Pistons, your 18 years there, really gave you the foundation for what you needed to basically start, a, in a way, start a franchise from scratch here. Uh, absolutely. The, um, the one thing that Commissioner Richard Brozel uh, came in to see us and our staff last week was uh, he had talked about how you know, leadership comes from you got to have an attitude that you're, you want to do, do some things yourself to lead by example. And uh, working for the Pistons, you had to work day in, day out. You, had, you got to meet all kinds of different kinds of customers, you know, the, the folks that might, uh, you need to relate to the folks in a business suit, but you also got to be able to relate to the, uh, to the little guy as well. And um, we had uh, so many experiences uh, with the Pistons to not only meet, meet uh, all kinds of different people, but build a good relationship with them from a standpoint of, uh, from a business standpoint. And um, all the creativity and things that we got to try with the Pistons, you know, you, you've been there, done that, you tried, you tried ideas that maybe didn't work or, or did, and uh, uh, that kind of, I, I can bring that experience along and that's gonna uh, get me well prepared uh, for the job here uh, with the flags. Uh, but I think that one, one thing that I think will benefit me the most was, I was involved in a great deal in the interview process, uh, usually around in the mid 90s, when we were hiring uh, some folks right out of college to get involved, when they, when they dreamed the same thing of getting involved with pro sports and having a job in pro sports. And I did a pretty good job of having an eye for that kind of talent. And I, uh, I, I go by the same old uh, standard, and that is to be successful, you've got to surround yourself with good people. And the staff uh, that I've hired, uh, I've got some outstanding employees that uh, I can rely on, I can, I can trust, uh, they've, got, they've got a good work ethic, and um, they're all about being involved with the, the community. They want to get to know the people of Port Huron, and they want to build a good relationship with them. And uh, if you're going to bat uh, or going to skate uh, with uh, those kinds of people, you're, you're going to be successful. Well, there's, there's no doubt, and it's, 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 it, you seem like the type of person that, uh, again, trying to share with your employees the the dream to make a make a successful team and and again that comes with the with the coach and the team we're going to talk about the team itself a little bit later Paul but again I guess why what I what I want to ask you is uh, harder being a coach you think or harder harder being a player I just want to apologize for every coach I had that had questions in, in uh, <laughs> my past uh, career uh, Definitely harder being a coach. It's uh, I guess you don't really realize it until you get in that position. Uh, you know, dealing with the different uh, the different uh, mentalities, the different aspects of uh, trying to get these players into Port Huron, and uh, and um, you know all their questions and uh, and whatnot. Uh, uh, I go home at five o'clock and uh, I wake up at midnight and can't get back to sleep because I uh, you know I have uh, so many questions asked these guys. And uh, our biggest commitment here, to, my biggest. Uh, issue is to try to get players in here that want to be committed to the community. Uh, you know what what the organization or what the staff or what people have done here uh, to get this team going uh, is outstanding. I, I mean, we had the staff paint in the dressing room. We have uh, booster clubs up there fixing, uh, fixing uh, getting sticks stick rack put together. Uh, it's unbelievable what, what the community has done to keep this team in Port Huron. And I, I want to let the players know that I bring in here. What what commitment is here to keep this team and, and make this team successful? Uh, so, uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's going out for a player to go out and talk to a, a school or go out to a hospital and talk to a sick child, that that that's never going to be an issue for for uh, my hockey players. They're you know they're they're going to have to do their share of promotions uh, just to give back to what what I've seen this past summer and, and uh, what what the community is trying to do to keep this hockey team here. So. Uh, I'm just looking forward to it. I can't wait to the 21st of that first game and, uh, and uh, see, uh, what, 3,500 people in the stands and cheering for the flags and uh, the new flag jerseys. I'm looking forward to it. Paul, you, you mentioned uh, the, the players being out in the community. 
you know, that was kind of, uh, I'm sure you heard it, some of the negative vibes from, be from before. Yeah. So whether it's the schools or a function, I know, I know yourself in your short time, uh, you were helping a, a Bantam team. I know uh, they were without a coach and you were out there kind of doing the drills with them. So I, I guess uh, leading by example, You'll be out in the community, and the team will be out in the community. Is that correct? Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, I've already I've already talked to different coaches whenever they need uh, some help or just need uh, uh, myself or any player out there to uh, you know to talk to the, the to the kids on the ice or or a school or whatnot. Uh, you know, they're more than welcome to give me a call. They're more than welcome to talk to anybody on the team to to go out there and, and share their knowledge of uh, hockey or their knowledge of life life experiences. So. Uh, like I said, uh, one of the goals when I recruit these players is I know that uh, these players are going to do their share of uh, off-ice uh, activities or off-ice uh, charity events and uh, they're not going to give me any issue or any qualms about it. They're, they're going to do it and, and that's uh, one of the... Uh, we always have a meeting at the beginning of the year with the players to kind of go over all the rules and all that and uh, that will not be an issue with the hockey team. I mean, if. Uh, uh, we'll have a schedule, and if the guy can't make it, well, it's his responsibility to to, to make sure somebody else on the team makes that uh, meeting or uh, or whatnot. So uh, we're looking forward to a, a big year and and, and showing that uh, showing the community that we know what the community has done, and we're trying to pay back to the community. Dan Paul mentions uh, being community involved. You know, uh, the old flags years ago. Uh, when the season ended, you and their careers ended. You had guys like Billy LeCain that played in the uh, NHL with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and and Billy Watt. They made they made Port Huron their home when uh, when the season was done and their and, and their career was over. Um, and I think they felt that way because uh, of the support that the that the community had had also given. In your short time here, you know, Dan um, uh, Paul mentioned about. Uh, Volunteers, painting the locker room and stuff like that. Have you seen the support? Have you seen from us? You know, I, I just asked Paul what I want to see from him and his players. I want to see him out there. I think the community wants to see him out there. Have you seen enough from us, us coming forward to helping out and volunteering? Uh, I know when Charlie and Herb were here, uh, I think some gentlemen volunteered their time to get your, your building ready on, on the main street there to, to get that up and running. Is that, has that continued? Have you A seen that? Absolutely. Uh, the community has been overwhelming. Uh, they've just been uh, behind us, very passionate about uh, getting behind us and helping us get started. I remember when we uh, first started, uh, I'd hired uh, Sherry Matus, our director of marketing and merchandising, and uh, uh, Nicole Noel uh, got on board early with us, and Darren McCullough. And, and the four of us were, <laughs> we were in my office, we, you know, basically sitting on, uh, you know, milk, crate, milk crates, and uh, just kind of laughing, hearing people just banging away and putting together, putting carpeting down, painting walls, and and the four of us were just like, you know what, Th this is a very unique experience to uh, be a part of this. And uh, so before we could sit down and do a whole lot of business planning, we were we were getting out there and meeting those fine folks from the community and, uh, and getting to know them uh, as, as they were coming in to help us. Uh, even uh, Mayor Mark Neal was uh, putting together cubicles uh, for us, and uh, we were impressed with that. Since then, uh, some of the uh, diehard season ticket holders have uh, been f feeling free to come on in, stop in, and say hi, hi to us uh, on, on days, and uh, meet with them at the Hack next door, uh, some of the Booster Club meetings, and let them know how much we appreciate their support. Uh, Lorraine was there, uh, you know, just helping us during the uh, big boat week uh, with our booth, and uh, a lot of the other uh, club members as well, and Jim and Jan and all those guys from the Booster Club. So. Uh, we've been uh, overwhelmed uh, to see their passion, and so the least we can do is give them that kind of passion back in return. So I'm going to ask you both now to describe a, a typical day, and I, again, I'll stay with you, Dan. Describe a typical day. I know when I'm, I'm driving into work, I've got to be work at City Hall at 8 o'clock. You're already there, so I know you, I know you start early, and I've been to some <laughs> of your speaking games, so I, I, I know you stay late. So I know it's a full day, but you know, when you go in, do you have a plan each day, what, what you hope to do, or does each day uh, kind of throw you for a little few surprises? Anybody on our staff would agree that there is no typical day. It's, uh, it's pretty chaotic from day to day because we, have, uh, uh, we do have some changes, like at the drop of a hat, where we'll say, hey, guess what? Governor Granholm now is coming here next Monday. I need everybody in my office now. We've got to put together a great plan. We want to let our season ticket holders know we've got to be there. And uh, we want to make a presence. We want to have some gifts to hand out to some of the kids uh, with our 
you know, FLAG's logo on there, our phone number, 982-FLAG, uh, and of course our website. Uh, so we have um, just so many days where you're sitting down, you're getting ready to get into a mode of calling on the businesses and letting them know we've got season tickets for sale and sponsorship opportunities. And, but then all of a sudden you're kind of pulled out and said, hey Dan, you got to go speak at this Rotary Club here in St. Clair. And uh, uh, so it, it, it's kind of humorous sometimes when I'm running from one, one meeting to the next. But uh, usually we um, uh, get everything done uh, that we wanted to in the course of a day. But then there's other days we're just like, wow, we still have a lot to do tomorrow just to catch up from the day before. So we're getting there. How about yourself, Coach? Uh, I know you don't have a complete team yet. If we went on the ice today, what do we got, six, six eight guys under uh, contract? We're up, we're up to 11 right now. 11, but, okay. Uh, they wouldn't let me keep my cell phone because that's how, uh, <laughs> that consists of my day on the cell phone, on the phones, uh, a lot of recruiting. So uh, we don't have the opportunity as uh, NHL hockey clubs have where they, we have scouts in different parts of the world. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, a lot of phone calls, a lot of different uh, scouts and general managers to find out what type of player that we're trying to bring in here. So we're on the phone a lot. Uh, uh, I know uh, we started probably right, right from the get-go, uh, meeting once a week, if it was Monday or Tuesday, where uh, uh, Herb, Charlie, Dan, myself would get in there and kind of talk about what happened the previous week so it's kind of kind of interesting to try to get all the different aspects and uh, you know I know it's uh, my job to build a team but it's kind of nice to find out what Dan was doing the past week usually not very much but he lets me know that uh, he's pretty busy but uh, you know I try to get in there by uh, you know what not eight nine o'clock and uh, and uh, put all my calls in and uh, you know if I got an opportunity to go out and coach some kids I'll uh, maybe take an hour off go out there and uh, like last night uh, it was kind of funny I uh, uh, kind of had a rough day with a couple players trying to get them signed and uh, uh, I went back in there about uh, 7 o'clock and uh, about an hour later Nicole come in from, the, from uh, her uh, apartment and did a little bit of work and we're sitting there just talking about uh, how excited we are about the, this whole program and uh, trying to build this team. So uh, the, uh, obviously the days are a little different. I know when the season starts you're, uh, you know you have a practice in the morning about 10 and uh, guys are back home by, you know they're done by noon and if we got a game we got to be back in the room by 4 or 5 so when we leave about 11, so uh, it's definitely different. Every day is different, but uh, my job is uh, a lot of phone calls, a lot of talking to different uh, scouts and agents and, and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, it, it, you keep pretty busy on that cell phone. I, I know that uh, Sherry Matus is always after me. She's such a wonderful person uh, working in the office. Uh, uh, she's always uh, bugging me and nabbing at me about uh, being on the phone, but uh, she's, uh, you know, she's one of the best to work for with. Coach, what type of uh, team are you trying to build here? Is it as, you know, we, we have a small rank, and I, I, I guess we're, we're, what, we're 85 by, I don't know, 180, uh -huh. and it needs to be 200 or something. Yep. But so what type of team are you, you know, you've talked about you're going you're gonna to pick players that hopefully are not only good hockey players, but going to be, uh, you know, part of the community. But, but again, uh, physical style, up-tempo, so to speak, uh, what, what are we looking for there? Uh, I'm looking for a team tough hockey team, meaning uh, you know, I don't want actually to go out and get three guys that are just put on the ice to fight or, or whatnot. I want to go out there and get, uh, you know, if it's 19, 20 players that in any situation will take up for anybody. If, uh, you know, if, uh, if uh, one of our smaller players is in trouble, I expect one of our you know, bigger players to go in and, and help out. Same as if uh, a bigger player is in trouble. I don't expect that, I do expect that smaller player to go in and help, uh, help out uh, uh, the other players. It's a team, it's a team effort and uh, everybody's got to know that uh, you know, we're all out there for each other and, and we're going to be team tough. Uh, um, uh, I know uh, playing in Muskegon a few years back, uh, I used to come into uh, Port Huron, like I said, if it was whatever month, but you know, you'd have your nap on the bus, you'd come in and uh, uh, we'd always put, uh, pull the bus up to Tim Horns, we get our coffee, try to wake up and, and that's where you kind of thought right away, you're like, oh jeez, I can't believe, uh, we got to play Port Huron. Back then it was the Border Cats and they had a pretty big team, pretty, they had a team tough team. Uh, and getting off the bus, going into the room, you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to get on that ice. I'm just going to get abused and fans are going to yell and scream at me and it's not, just not a fun environment to be a visiting team. And I want to bring back that environment where visiting teams uh, come in that dress room, you're about to put your skates on and you don't want to put your skates on because you don't want to play against the poor year on flags. Uh, and, uh, you know, I want to bring that into, uh, into our building. So. I'm going to let the players know uh, how I felt when I came in here six or seven years ago, and that's the attitude we're going to have. 
Okay, Danny puts hopefully a, he's going to put not hopefully he's going to put a good product on the team. We're going to have a, we're going to have a winning team. Now, you better be. He's now, on a cell phone enough. Now, <laughs> come, now it comes down to you, your expertise, and your wonderful staff to put fannies in the seats, to sell sponsorships, to make it. Ex in other words, I'm not just going to a hockey game. You know, I'm going to an event, so to speak. So. How are season ticket sales going? How are sponsorships uh, going? How can someone like myself get involved so that again, when that opposing team com comes comes into our backyard, so to speak, uh, that uh, they're gonna go like like the coach said, like, oh geez, I, you know, I don't think we we stand a very good chance tonight. Well, we uh, we have increased the season ticket base already 50 percent uh, from last year. I think um, last year the Beacons had about a little over 500. Uh, we're we're slowly approaching uh, 750, even 800, of a few more kind of the sponsorship deals that we have coming through. Uh, thanks to some of the fine folks and support that we've gotten from the community, uh, uh, Port Huron Hospital got on board to sponsor the mascot, and that's going to be uh, a win-win for everybody, knowing that the mascot's fun to bring in. Slapshot is his name to bring him into the hospitals to meet kids and things like that, and be a part of the community. Citizens First is going to have a big presence on our Zamboni and the on ice. Uh, the Hack just, just spoke to uh, Angel today talking about uh, uh, some uh, advertising and season tickets that they want to be involved with. Uh, so we have um, a, a lot of companies uh, that want to do something. Uh, we're slowly but surely getting um, a lot of the pieces in place. Uh, our staff is working very hard at that. Um, the one thing that though that has impressed me the most has been a lot of the people that have been calling us to say already, hey look, you know, I want to get my, my church uh, program there and I want to get uh, um, my whole company down there for some games and, and uh, we've been working with the, the folks from the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and uh, the Sons, uh, saving our neighborhood streets uh, uh, with Tyrone and them over there. So we have um, a great potential to be a, a presence with the schools and and have everybody want to come to the games. And then once we can, uh, uh, you know, make sure that we supply that kind of passion by saying, now that you're here, let's make sure we put on a great show. So we've got to be creative and make sure that our on ice uh, presentations are, are fun so that we're, we're making it uh, fun for the families to want to come back. And I mentioned before, uh, you know, some of the gripes from the old teams the last five, six, seven years was again that the the players weren't involved enough in the community. Coach says that that's definitely going to going to happen. Uh, always heard about you know lack of marketing efforts. You know it it was always that you know the the, the fans or the populace wanted to blame the team and, and the team would basically say well you know the community didn't do enough for us. Well you know you look at the former uh, business offices and there'd be two three maximum four employees out there and, and really nobody knew them in the community you've got a staff of about a dozen people there <laughs> so uh, if there's strength in numbers you you you've got it but I'm, I'm assuming each one has their own bailiwick so to speak you give them the assignments and and again as you said uh, you're a good judge of character they're very good at what they do explain that a little bit well, uh, for instance, when I, I hired Darren McCullough, uh, he was uh, a top-notch student from Rochester College, recommended by my wife, and um, he's very good. He developed our website, and www.porthuronflags.net. Um, okay. So just when we started that, it, everybody looks at that website, and they're like, wow, this is tremendous, you know, and they, they see that it's real. You know, the United Hockey League is, is growing, and we've got to make sure that it, we're letting folks know that... Uh, uh, these are players that can be in this league and they can aspire to be in the NHL someday. That's what Coach Willard's job will be to do, to aspire those young, young uh, players to be that. So if the people I'm hiring are making it real uh, through the things we're doing uh, with our website, uh, just hired Melissa Reynolds, a homegrown uh, uh, lady here from uh, SC4. And uh, she's got connections with a lot of the uh, businesses and the schools because she was a, a, a local volleyball player. Top-notch uh, top volleyball, top volleyball player. And uh, we have uh, two guys that I kind of stole from minor league baseball. Bob Gearing, my director of uh, ticket sales, and Nick Shabro, who's done excellent work thus far as our director of the sponsorships. And uh, yeah, you gotta spend money to make money, but you better spend it right. You know, you've gotta have uh, the right kind of people that know day in and day out the job's never done, and we've got a long way to go. And we can't just make this great the first year 
we've all got to be looking at this with a, with a vision that says, you know, where is Port Huron five years from now? And, and what kind of an impact did our hockey team make on the, the community? So I've been wanting to install that passion in everybody since I hired them and uh, make sure that they know that during the season, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. You know, we've got a lot of uh, relationships to keep building and making sure they're getting their money's worth and making sure that uh, they are uh, putting on as good of a show for the fans that they can. Coach, we've only got a minute or two left. I believe the season starts in October, training camp in September? Our training camp will start, uh, start around the 10th of October. Uh, uh, I hope to have about 25, 26 guys. I don't want to bring in too many guys. Uh, you know, a lot of teams are bringing in 30, 30 35 guys. Uh, hope to bring in, like I said, 25 guys. Uh, uh, right now we have 11, 11 guys signed. I brought in a couple guys from Bakersfield and uh, Ryan Gillis, uh, Brent Lutz. Gillis is just a natural born leader. Uh, played for some tough coaches in the past, been a captain. Uh, Brent Lutz is, uh, is a young, uh, young player that's uh, starting his second year, drafted by uh, St. Louis. Thought I expect big things out of him. He's, uh, he's just uh, an all-around good hockey player, scorer, uh, hard nose. He can do whatever, uh, whatever the coaches ask. Uh, yeah, I signed Joe Cartarelli. He's been known to uh, uh, around the East Coast League. Uh, another scorer uh, uh, right up till 30 minutes ago, I got... I got calls from another different, uh, another different player. So uh, uh, I feel confident that we're going to put together a pretty good hockey team. Uh, uh, what the fans want to see, uh, you know, I can't guarantee. Uh, we can't guarantee that we're going to win a cup, or we can't guarantee we're going to, uh, you know, win a certain amount of games. But uh, the only thing I can guarantee that uh, when fans come in and see our, our team on the ice, they're they're going to go back happy because they're going to know that uh, uh, they're going to play 60 minutes of hockey. So uh, that, that's what I can. I can, uh, I can tell right now that uh, that's the type of team I'm putting together where fans will want to come back and see us play. And hopefully we'll bring both of you back in a few months and let us know uh, once the season gets started how, uh, how everything's going. So, uh, Dan, Paul, thank you for being our guest on City Beat today. Thank, thank you, Randy. Well, that's our show for today. We'll see you next week on another edition of City Beat.